Welcome to the show. Okay, good evening, everybody. I'd just like to welcome everyone to tonight's uh, show. Uh, we're going to do a special edition show of Rosh Chodesh Adar. Chodesh Adar, in fact. The month of Adar. I'd like to welcome Joe. Uh, I'd like to dedicate tonight's show. I'd like to uh, dedicate also tonight's show. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. לחיים טובים ארוכים, תראו עולם ישראל, אספשלי גבי על נעמי בית יעל מלכה, אלישע בבת שבע תפקה, וכבר יש לי בת רוזט, יעל לאה בת רוזט, לאה ליליאן בת רוחה מרחנה. כן נא רפאנה להם, רפואת הנפש, רפואת הגוף, ורפואה קרובה לבוא. זאת השם, the study of Torah that we're going to study together tonight will be in the merit of the Shem. So, our guest tonight is a special edition of Chodesh Adar. And as everybody knows, Mishinecha Sadar, Arbim Besimcha. So, however it's been your week, it's been good, it's been so, so, almost good, nearly good. Kimat uh, Tov. But the next hour, Bezat Hashem, we're going to talk about how we're going to be more Sameach. And uh, Bezat Hashem, we're going to leave the show much more inspired and more happy. And I could just be telling jokes for the next hour. <laughs> And everyone will be laughing. And, uh, but when you, when you finish the show, you're going to have to come back to real life and face, uh, face all, all the challenges what awaits for you. But when we're studying the Torah, we become different people. We become better people. And uh, we face life with different attitudes. Everything changes. So after this year, we're going to be all happy for the Chodesh Adar. You excited? Ready for you? Ready as we'll ever be. Ready, okay. So we'll have to welcome also Yaron. So actually the Gemara says, Kishem Shinichnas Av Mematin Besimcha, Mishinichnas Adar Marbim Besimcha. So what's really the connection between Adar and Av? It's two extreme opposites. So what do we learn from the fact that the, that the Gemara um, you know, it joins, puts them together that in the Chodesh of Av, the month of Av, when we fast, obviously, Tisha B'Av, when we sit on the floor and there's no shaving, we don't eat meat, nine days. So that is parallel to the Simcha of Chodesh Adav. You know, it is. There's many answers. There's uh, many right answers. I don't want to make a suggestion. How about Gyal? No? Okay, so. You want I, to say something? I learned it before. I, uh, yeah. You can mention, there's a few, there's many all right answers. I'm just going to give one, one or two, but you can give her something if you had. What's the connection? Uh, anyway. No, no. Okay. Okay. So I'll get you. I'll tell you the Tosfa. Tosfa says, Bishin Ichnas Av Mematin Besimcha. He calls me Mematin Bishin Ichnas Av. There's no weddings at all, there's no eating meat, there's no wine, uh, no parties at all, no simcha. And just as like, it's legamre, not besimcha, so in Chodesh Adar, barbim besimcha means totally barbet. Just like mamatim doesn't mean get a little bit less happy and get a little bit more happy. It means get totally, totally happy. You know, totally not simcha because we don't have the Beit HaMikdash. Uh, you know, our father's not at home. We're away from home. How can we be happy in the Chodesh Av? But in the month of Adar, we are totally happy. God is with us the whole month. Just like Adar, we're so sad that God is not with us. The presence of God is not with us in the Beit HaMikdash. But in the month of Adar, we totally simcha legamwe. And we have to not be any part of us, any atzvot at all, any sadness. But all of us have to be completely happy. Uh, you know, just as a matter of a metaphor, but like you see in Chodesh Av, you know, if somebody would uh, be eating meat in the nine days, what do you mean? We don't eat meat in the nine days, yeah? You tell him off, right? Yeah. So I get that smiling, don't eat meat all the year, not just nine days. But just like you tell him off for not doing the halachot of the Chorban Abayit in the nine days, so too you should tell yourself off, why am I not happy all the time? It's Chodesh Adav. I should be completely happy the whole time. So let's talk about what does it mean completely happy? Ah, you're going to ask me, Rabbi, 
you can't just demand me to be happy the whole time. You know, you're like exaggerating. I don't be happy the whole time. Sometimes I'm not happy. Yeah, I miss my bus. I miss my train, or I don't know what it is. I have to wait for 20 minutes. And, or, you know, some things, uh, you know, that's a mild thing, but some things are more difficult in your day-to-day life. How can the Torah demand from you to be happy the whole time? Any suggestion? But it's not the same as, as Sukkot. So it's not really demanding to be happy the whole time. It's just that you need to do more, right? Oh, so this is exactly what we said. This is exactly what we were Not just to be more happy. So you could understand the Gemara like that. But the way Tosfat understands the Gemara is they have to be totally happy. And according to the Hasidim, about it, tonight's Shio is based on the Be'er Parasha, which I read, uh, written by you have Elimelech Bidawan. Uh, and he writes every week about the parasha or based on Emunah. So mainly the Shio is tonight based on what I read from him and which he brings from Hasidic sources. So tonight you're actually in a Shio of uh, a Hasidic Shio. All, all the Torah Hasidut is going to be uh, in tonight's Shio. You're going to experience this. Yeah, a little bit different. And I hope you enjoy it. So I'll be the Torah Hasidut, the Baal Shem Tov, and all this time meeting. Um, so the question, how can you demand a so person to be besimcha? So, Gilad mentioned the mitzvah of Sukkot, you need to be totally samach. That is, in fact, an uh, obligation by the Torah to be samach the whole time. And definitely you can compare it. Here it's not a Torah obligation, but it's a Gemara. The Gemara says that a person should be chodesh adar, marbim besimcha. But the question which we're asking applies to both Sukkot and to other, how can a person be demanded to be happy the whole time? A oh, smiley face. It's not just not just being put on a smile. Not just walking around smiling. You know, anyone can smile. You actually have to be happy inside your heart. So where is that coming from? Can we have suggestions from the crowd? You've all been happy before. Is it because we have to be appreciative? Good answer. Appreciative. I think yeah, that Joe, is To show our love for God. We're showing our love for God. Uh, how are you explaining? How are you going to be happy the whole time? But it's a but it's it's a proximity to Hashem. That this uh, this period of time in the year where there is a greater proximity, certainly in Sukkot, but also in the Adar. We know that Adar is a special month in that. Period. Okay. So how, how am I getting demanded from you? I'm happy. We're going to be, it's a month where this proximity goes, but how are you explaining that we, how can a person be demanded to, to be happy the whole time? Uh, should we be always happy anyway because everything is from Hashem? Ah, what a line. <laughs> what a line, Yavon. What a line. I love that. We're going to keep that for later on in the show. But we're going to, first of all, Yavon said, should we be happy all the time because... Just repeat it from uh, everything is from Hashem. Everything anyway. is from Hashem. Excellent. So always... You're on excellent. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think you should always everything be happy. Anyway. You should always be happy. So we we'll have to give the answer. So he's saying you should always be happy. That's like a question. Because everything from Hashem is an answer. Happiness. And we should always strive to understand the happiness. Like, or find the happiness, you know what I so mean? So, find the happiness, all right. It, so, I think it doesn't, I think you also, the other thing is, how do you define happiness anyway? I mean, it doesn't mean that you have to walk around with a smile on my face as if you've had, uh, as if you're taking a lot of medication or something. You just, <laughs> you know, you just need to understand that everything was for yeah. Hashem, everything is for the good. And excellent, excellent. We'll have excellent. A good, yeah, I like the idea of finding life, happiness. You know? I like that. Uh, it's not like Jack, what did you say, Yakov? Did you speak up? You I, like that? I, I like idea? what Yaron just I like what Yaron just said about finding happiness. I think that's quite important. Sometimes it's in your face staring at you. Okay. You don't realize it's there. Okay, I like that. I like that as well. It's staring you in the face. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about it. Well, maybe okay, maybe we'll talk about the 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 misconception first. What is happiness? Okay, so um, does anybody know the the American uh, American right? I think in the treaty in, in what's it called? A constitution. 
Yes. Constitution, thank you. Dec it's not because the declaration, declaration of declaration. Next one. Yeah, declaration. They, they, they write about about the the right. So uh, everyone has the right and the freedom. Yeah. To, for happiness to seek happiness. The pursuit, the pursuit of happiness. Yeah, pursuit of happiness. Yeah, yeah. The, the pursuit of happiness is the American dream. Yeah, the declaration. Everyone has the freedom to. Of the pursuit of happiness. What is that pursuit? You go look for happiness. What everyone makes happy, uh, makes happy different things, and you can pursue that and try and gain them. That is not the Torah objective, okay? Because that means you're pursuing it. You don't have it, right? But you got to look for it. So you go and find a job and make money, and then you can buy whatever makes you happy, okay? That's basically understanding what American dream. That is not the Jewish attitude, no. Because then you're missing things. How can you be happy? You're always pursuing the happiness. You're never actually going to get there. Because you're always looking for it. Where is it? Uh, so it's always the opposite. Busy looking for it. Oh, so it's opposite, exactly. So like Yaakov said, it's staring you in the face. So we have to understand that happiness is not a state of being that we're pursuing. It's not where we're going somewhere. Okay? Happiness is a, is a state of mind. It's attitude. Okay? Now, maybe you've heard this before. It's all in the mind. Uh, Mao said it's like about appreciating. If you appreciate it, you know, then you're definitely going to be happy. You appreciate what you have. You know, you can be tremendously happy. Imagine you heard, you know, one of your, uh, no, you. A person here is a, you know, doctor, listen, we're a bit worried about one of the organs, you know, just mild liver. Yeah, listen, I'm going to do some checkups. Maybe something serious, maybe it's a growth. Uh, panic. Uh, I see medical experts. And uh, for a couple of days, he's not sleeping, didn't test. And then afterwards, you know, he finds out, doctor, okay, everything's clean, nothing. You don't need no surgery, no uh, no medication, no treatment, it's fine. Oh, what a happy day. The liver is working fine. Now, we could have just been happy every day if you just think about our liver, right? So definitely, you know, every time a person goes to the bathroom, makes a bracha, show you God created man. With tremendous wisdom. Isn't that a bracha of happiness? Says Rabbi Victor Miller, he said, every time you see a person who's uh, disabled, what should you be thinking? He's saying, oh, poor guy in a wheelchair. Do you know what you should I be think thinking? It's wrong to think like that because you're one is automatically assuming that they don't have uh, the same quality of life or something just because in a wheelchair. Rabbi Victor Miller says, huh. when, you see, when you see a person on a wheelchair, you should be grateful that thank God that I have legs. I can walk. Amazing. That should give you a happy feeling. That could be me. Huh. Oh, thank God I can walk. I can climb upstairs. That's what I should be thinking when the lift doesn't work. Yeah. Thank God I can walk up the stairs. I should be happiness. What a thrill. You ever seen a person who started walking after physio, uh, after being in a wheelchair for months? He gets up, you know, and he's just amazing. He just is so excited. He can take a few steps. It still feels so good. So definitely it's about appreciating. And it's definitely about a state of mind. In fact, the Zohar, Zohar said, Besimcha is the same otiyot as Machshava. Asameach. Besimcha, Machshava. Same letters. The thinking, it's all in the mind. So we're going to put ourselves in the right frame of mind. What is the right frame of mind? And this is the opening. And we're going to end off, uh, we're going to go back to the line of Yaron. Says that more Merujin, Chassid the Shreb from Merujin. He said, "Marbin b'simcha is how we do Marbin b'simcha. We talk about emuna. Everything is from God. That's how I'm happy about it. Because at the time when I think about everything's from God, I call it tova. Everything's good. Everything's a gift from God. You feel a closeness to God, you feel happy. Have you ever seen somebody who gets a gift uh, and he's upset about getting a gift? He got a free gift. Uh, amazing. You know, we get a free pen, we get excited, yeah? You get something free, you get a gift, you get a present, you're happy. So everything is a gift from God. I mean, I, I'm, I was merited to see one of the greatest Sadiqim um, in the previous generation. You know, in our generations, he was he passed away maybe just two or three years ago. His name is Rabbi Abraham Ginochowski. He said the two of the gifts, the greatest gifts that he's ever grateful for, he said to his wife, was his illness 
and his son's illness. I don't know what he had, but he said these are two gifts. He said, you don't know, you know how much we got thanks to those. You know, we, everything is calculated. We have the emuna. We believe in God that everything, three things you have to remember. What's the underlying three things you have to remember? Everything in life you're facing. Number one, everything is from God. Everything. There's nothing like that happens. Okay, I shouldn't have done this. If he would have done that, it's not blaming people, don't blame yourself. Everything is from God. Number two, everything is calculated. That means it's for a reason. Mm -hmm. If something messed up, something didn't go wrong, didn't work out, that has God's got calculated reason for it. Is, is it, sorry, thing, sorry to interrupt, is it calculated throughout this lifetime or previous life? Like, you know, all yeah, so for yourself, yeah. Well, so everything is, is for your own good. You get Joe's asking a good question, but ultimately, everything is going to be the best for you, for you as a person, for your human being, for your body and soul. So the best thing for you is what happens at this stage. So whatever you went through in the past, whatever you went up through uh, in this week, now sometimes it takes a while to see that. You don't realize until you get older or until time passes, you think, wow, oh, isn't that amazing how that happened to me? You know, I just feel that, uh, you know, the experience which I had felt me with knowledge that I can help other people or what helped me to grow as a person. People grow for experiences. So, Litova, and not only that, but sometimes Hashem has a calculation. I remember I had a friend, um, his name, maybe I won't say his name. He was in a car crash. He lost two fingers in his crash. Yeah, he's uh, decapitated. Um, and when they found him and he said, look, I, I still got three. Thank God I got three. Now there's two. You don't know what, what was that was expense. You know, maybe that was to pay for something else which he gained. Uh, so God's got every calculation. Everything is worked out. He needed two. That was to save him. You know, that was Hashem gave him a gift. The three. Instead of losing his whole hand, he was kind to him and gave him three fingers. But the way to look at it is different. So we don't know what God's calculation is. But what we need to remind ourselves is three things. Number one, everything's from God. Number two, everything is a cheshbon, calculated. All right, that means, you know, if, if you can try and imagine uh, an analogy, you've got your end of year, uh, I say, doch, doch shnati. Forget about English. Uh, report, uh, finance, finance report at the end of year. So you got all your expenditures, right? All your incomes, and then you work it out. You know, everything balances in the end. It's a balance. So <laughs> all the troubles may be difficult. It's God's all got it all calculated. And that God works it out for your own good. So we should be happy about it. Imagine if you're given, you know, a person everyone goes up to heaven, okay, and you can choose a package. Every package has got good things in it and difficult things in it. And you can choose each package that you want. So you go pick out and, go, you know, God's giving you the opportunity to pick out the package that you want. And then when you choose that, you'll be happy about it because you're the one who chose it. That's exactly how we're going to see in this. As you man, let's hope everything is going to be a joke because you'll realize that all the difficult things that we suffered were all gifts from God. So let's go back to what we spoke about. Where we'll do, we'll do some parasha, okay? Parasha. So, we're going to go back. This week's parasha actually talks about the, the clothes of the Kohen Gadol, the Bugadim, which they actually got made. Beforehand, in Parashat Tetzaveh, that was the command to do them. Um, and here, in this week's parasha, Moshe, Moshe talks about how he spent all the money that came in, what he used it for. And it's almost like a repeat of the, the deem, what was meant, what he, what he did with all, the, with all the parts that were received. Now, I want to bring attention to this beautiful pasuk. And amazing, and a, a beautiful idea that we can learn from it, okay? So if you remember this homage, I'm going to show you just a picture, just to remind you. Uh, can you see on screen? I don't know if it's good Bit it's a bit blurry, but it's blurry. Okay. I don't know. 
your the background is blurry. Your background, your background, your background is blurry. All right. Oh, is that better? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's the question. Got on. Okay. In this front, this is wearing the ephod. Do you remember the ephod is like a, is like a, almost like an apron. Um, and that was the front of it, and it had two straps. Now, what was it made of? It had two gemstones on the on the shoulder straps, and the gemstones had all the names of the twelve tribes on each side. Okay, and from that would hang the choshen, the the breastplate with all the stones. Yeah, that was his breastplate that would hang from the sole of the straps. And each one had uh, the names of the tribes, and that would light up as the Quran Gadol would ask for something in the, you know. Okay. What color was the apron? Can you see? Orange. What color? Orange. Oh, okay, so it doesn't come up on screen. <laughs> so, what according to the Torah, what color was it? The Gila, do you know? You remember? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not the Argaman. Yes, one of the colors was Argaman. Um, Argaman, it is like scarlet red, Tola Chani, Vishesh Musa, yes. and Tchelet. So maybe we made of like a blend of three or four colors. Uh, trellet, sky blue, scarlet, uh, red, purple, wool, and gold. Now it was all woven. Where does the gold from? How do you make gold thread? What, what do you mean? How you make? I don't know. Well, you don't make, you know, you make wool and then you dye it purple, you dye it red, you dye it blue. How do you make it gold? So the Torah tells you how to make gold thread. I'm going to read you the pasuk. We are set up for. You used to make the afford, which was the apron, zahav gold, trelet v'argaman v'tulat shani v'shesh muzav. He would thread it in with the with a piece of gold with the three colors of wool, and then they, that's how he used to make the apron. Now look into the next four words. V'yarkeu v'yarkeu et pachei zahav. Which means they thinned out the gold the plates. They had thinned gold plates and they thinned them out. So they were very thin sheets. And then they would cut them into strips and make gold threads. You with me? Okay, thanks for the nod. Vyarkeu means they thinned out. The thinness, the the Pachazav is like the sheets of gold. And then he cut it into the rest. And that's how they made the effort. Okay, so now we're coming on to the Hasidish idea. Says the Divrei Israel. Divrei Israel says, Pachazav. Pach is like an expression of Pachay Nefesh, somebody who's uh, he's like worried. Okay? Now, what do you worry about? What do people worry about? Life. Life. Okay. What's a what, what, what's a big worry in life? What, what do people worry about? Health. 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 Relationships. You name it. <laughs> okay. So one of the big worries of people in life, and many people have, this is worry about money. How am I going to finance my family? I need to buy a house. Okay, everyone's in different stages of life, but maybe in earlier stages of fights of money, and then it changes to worries about uh, relationships, and maybe uh, you know the elderly worried about health. But people worry a lot about money. That's what people get up in the morning. That's people work, even if you have enough money for the month. But what about for next month? If you have enough money for the year, what about for the future? What about investment for people think about their pension or about their children? People worry about money. I don't mean just people work for money. Nothing wrong with working. That's perfectly legitimate. Wanting to make money is perfectly fine and good. And making money is good. But worrying about money. Should we a person really worry about making money? No, because we should we should have trust in God that he's going to be okay. right. So excellent. So now listen to the... This is really Joe. Excellent. Okay. So this is what we're talking about. This is tonight's show. 
So if a person came into this shield tonight thinking about, how am I going to pay my bills? I can't be happy because I've got too many checks out coming in and uh, coming out, going out, and not enough money coming in. So listen to this beautiful idea on the Pasuk from the woven thread threads, golden threads of the effort. Vayakowit Pachei Azav says that the race Israel. Pachei Azav is the worry. Zahav, gold. What are you worried about? You're worried about your money. Pachei Zahav says the Torah, Vayakowit Pachei Azav. They thinned out, they're worried about the money, about the gold. They thinned out their worries. How did they thin out? Vayakiu. Yibarku is rakia. Rakia is referring to the heavens. You know how you can thin out your worry about money? Think about the heavens. Where do we get our money from? Money comes from Shemaim. And Joe said it, and Yaron said it, everything comes from heaven. She said, What are you worried about? That's how you make things thin if you have betachon in, in emuna and a kodesh bar. We're gonna say now a story, okay? Uh, Mr. Worry comes into synagogue and he's like, oh, "I'm worried. I'm gonna pay my bills. How am I gonna pay it? I'm gonna." And uh, Chaim says to him, "Listen, well, what you what are you worried about?" Said so when you have, when you sit down for lunch, do you worry about your food? What do you mean, worry? Imagine you had to take a uh, um, pharmacy, right? You had to, you had to take, you're like a delivery for a pharmacy. You have to give everyone their medicine. And you got hundreds of people to do all in one day, or maybe all in one hour. And you got to make sure everyone gets the right medicine. And everyone's got their own code and their own numbers. And you can't get mixed up between the medicines because if you give one person the wrong medicine, it can have very bad, dangerous effects, right? Okay. So then when you sit down to eat, your food gets broken up into your body and every part of your body gets the right part what it needs. All the body, go, ooh, you know, you've got different limbs in the body, 248 limbs. And the body's nutrients split up correctly into all its organs, you know, to the blood supply, everything flows around, everything works. Now you don't worry about that. You're all calm. So why do you worry about your money? When we say in Berkat Amazon, we say, Hazan et ha'olam kulo. What does that mean? Translation. Hazan et ha'olam kulo. It feeds the entire world. Yeah, God finances, right, or feeds the entire world. Yes. Then the next line is betuvo, in his kindness, in his bechen, u bechesed, u brachamim, in his graciousness, in his compassion. In the whole world he feeds. Then we say another line. He gives bread to everyone. Well, if he finances everyone, then he gives bread to everyone. So, this is a beautiful understanding. Means even the bread that you eat, it gets split up correctly into all the basar, all the different parts of your body. You don't worry about that. You know, maybe my liver will get too much or then uh, my pancreas or, or the kidneys won't get what they need. No, everything's fine. When we have a next time we sit down for a meal of bread, which is going to be at least tomorrow evening. And our Shabbat meal. And we end up with Dubikat Amazon. We remember, I don't need to worry about my money. And uh, it's very important to remember that we have this big chase for money. You know, we think we chase, we move faster, we're going to get more done, we'll earn more money quicker. Everything comes to the right person at the right time. You do what you're supposed to be doing. You try what to do and everything will come. <clears throat> now we're going to share, share with you a beautiful chidush from the Gaon with Vilna. Gaon means genius of Vilna. And every time I say chidush from the Gaon with Vilna, you just realize why he's called the genius of Vilna. He was a big tzaddik. It wasn't just a genius. He was a, it was a very big tzaddik. <clears throat> what was his name? Rabbi Eliyahu. Eli is actually his real name was Eliyahu, Rav Eliyahu from Vilna. Um, and he was called as the Agon, Agon Rav Eliyahu, Agon of Vilna. Okay, so one of the secrets for the Torah, which is now from Moshe Rabbeinu, is the Ta'amim Amikra. What's a Ta'amim Amikra? What's Ta'amim Amikra? 
the vowels, like the notes. The notes, the, the musical notes. Okay, now the Chazam, when he sings, he doesn't just make up the tune. It's written in the book, right? Everyone remembers from the oh, There is this guy doing with his hand, like. With his hands, yeah, okay. The, the conductor, yeah, the conductor with his fingers, yeah. So the, the conductor with his fingers is actually to the tune of what the Tamim are. No. The Tamim were given by Moshe Rabbeinu. Lachal Moshe Misenai descended directly. There is deep secrets in the Tamim. I don't know all of them. Actually, there are very few of them. Some of them were revealed by the Gaon of Yilma. Rav Chaim Vital, in the Sefer Ad Chaim, all the in the Kabbalah, there's deep yeah. secrets into the reason of the Tamim. That's why it's very important to, for the Tamim to get it right. The person has to practice the learning, get good Baal Kore, uh, who's accurate in the in the Tamim. Go to a shul, somebody knows how to read properly from the Tamim. So the God of Vilna says a beautiful Chidush in the Megillat Esther. In the Megillat Esther also was written by Ruach HaKodesh, not from the time of Moshe Rabbeinu, but it was written by Ruach HaKodesh. <clears throat> and in chapter two, where Achashverosh chooses a second wife, so the Pasuk says, When it came the turn of each young girl to be chosen as a queen or to come before Achashverosh, so the tune is Kadma Ve'azla. So in the Torah, we read it, Kadma Ve'azla, but, which means to go forth, to come and go forth. And it, it uh, gives the impression of excitement, like they're running towards something. Why are they running to? Each one must be chosen as the royal princess. You know, that's, that's a big upgrade, right? Uh, you can remember when the, I forgot his name, the Prince of England. Uh, Harry, William. Uh, well, that's it, yeah. I was thinking of William. Yeah. Well, when, when William, and he was just the heir to the throne. When he got, when he got married, uh, everyone was so excited, the whole country, you know, she was a chosen girl to be. And he wasn't even the king. He's not even the second in, in, in the throne. Not the, you know, third or fourth um, to the throne. And here the king himself is choosing a, a bride. Everyone's running. It's a big excitement. So that's Kadma Azla. But then when it came to the turn of Esther, what are the notes? The name of the notes is Munach. Munach, 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 Munach. Four times. Now, what does it mean, Munach? What's in English, Munach? Laid. Munach, Munach. What does it mean? A Munach term. Or late. Yeah, late, late, late or rested. Yeah, Munach. That means rested. You know, you're not moving too fast. Munach, it's, it's laid there, it's rested there. She's not, not running anywhere. In fact, she, you know, she's going slowly. Maybe they'll just like miss me out. Maybe you'll find someone before me. Munach rested. That means she wasn't running anywhere. Now, who got chosen in the end? We all know the story. Esther. What about all the other girls? They were running with excitement. They didn't get chosen. It wasn't even like a second place. It's not like a runner-up prize or anything. There's only one gets chosen. Now, what's the, what's the message behind that? Person who's running, trying to make the money, he's running. Yeah. Uh, you gonna get it? No. God chooses who's gonna get be chosen as queen. God chooses how you're gonna get the money when you get the money. You do what you need to do. You go, even if you go slowly. Munach, munach, munach. God wants you to get it. You'll get it. You've done your standard, you've done everything's fine, everything will come. There's no there need to be worried, there's not like panicking in it. Don't think about that. You're in good hands. Your hands are the creator. I'm like, think about it in your whole lifetime. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's been a period of your life and you've gone to bed hungry every night because you had no food. Anytime you had to sleep in the streets. Oh, thank God, Baruch Hashem. No, I'm not talking about like one night when you had uh, you went out for a trip, but for a period of time when it, no, not taking care of you for how many years? Thank God. So not to be worried about that. So here we're talking about all in, in the Amuna of, of our Hashem. So let's go back to Beis Simcha. Where does the happiness come into? Says Chovat Elavavot, and Simcha, ke Simchat Abotech Hashem. There is no happiness like somebody who trusts in God. 
like your answer. Everything is from God. Of course, I'm going to be happy. So this is what we're here for. Month of Adar is for the chizuk of Emunah. Emunah. Pasuk says, in Yosheb Beset Aradon, we say, I'm with him in his pain. That means every Jew, when he's suffering, God's there. Mm. What does it mean, I'm with him? I'm with him. I didn't want him to suffer. I chose him the best thing that was going to be good for him. Okay? What does that mean? When, when God needs something to measure up, he needs to balance the, the balance. He needs to do something in our favor. We need a tikkun. So, he thinks, listen, I don't, I don't want to hurt him. I'm going to be there with him. I'll give him something small. I'll give him a hole in the sock. It's going to be a little bit annoying, you know. But that'll be, that's enough. So you'll be happy. Every time now you have a hole in your sock, you'll be happy. Thank God, you know, it's only a hole in my sock. It's not a hole in my shoe. <laughs> so that's how we need to look at life for the whole time. So, God is with you in every part of distress. At smooth sadness, only comes from a lack of emunah. But if we're thinking about Hashem, He's running the world. He's the emunah. But, but also, that's when worship. You have... Sorry. You're on, please. No, no, sorry. I, I, I never I find it hard to, to see when people wanting to speak or not. So sorry if I interrupted you. It's okay. We can say it later. No worries. Okay. So, how are we going to do now, Rabbi Besimcha? So when we're talking about we have to be more happy. And we're saying happiness is in the mind and happiness is in the frame of our trust in God. So how do we become more happy? How do we become more happy? That's what we're here for tonight, to build our emunah in Hashem. And that's why we give these few analogies. So let's just summarize again. What were the three points that we need for emunah? First thing? Happiness. Yeah, but what is the three points? Everyone has to remember this. This is going to be free. Oh, you need to know by heart. Three things. First stage is everything is from God. Second stage is everything happens for a reason calculated. And third thing is everything is for the good. Now I've got to think about that all the time. Okay. But where, but where are these three are coming from? So this is what down is based on the uh, Sefer Bittachon. Uh, it's like summarized from the also, um, from the Chomet Alavot, also Derech Emuna, Gana Emuna, Gamuna of Abba, who she brings it down. But it's Buddha on the time. It's just a way to summarize every time you're thinking about uh, Emuna, right? Every time you want to think about, okay, let's be Chizuk. Okay, listen, this is from God. It's for a reason. And it's for my good. I call it Tova. Besimcha. Marbim Besimcha. Besimcha is actually, let's do the Gematria. Gematria of Besimcha. Okay, so Bet is two. Simcha Sin is how much? 300. Mem, 40. Go on, do the math for me. A little bit more. No. No, no, no. Two, three hundred forty-eight and five. Yeah. Who's doing that for me? Is it? Is it? Three hundred and fifty-five. Yeah. And what is the gematria of the word Shana? Year. Fifty-six. Same. Shana. No, ah, sorry. Uh, Three fifty-five. Yeah. So it's exactly the same. Besimcha and Shana. So if we marbim besimcha, this simcha, if it means we marbim the emuna, and we have the emuna with this chodesh adar, then we take it out throughout the whole year. The simcha where that we bring out in the month of Adar to bring us out the whole year. And that is your own opening line for the shield. It'll be open, be happy the whole year. <laughs> so in in that case. Uh, question in that case oh um, man which, okay. like, it's, it's beautiful um in that case how do we understand coming to of that we should melt him i mean we're building m1 you can't take away your m1 that's like it's like okay very good very good very good excellent okay excellent okay so excellent so if you realize 
there is a little bit different between our because art doesn't mean get depressed, yeah? No, it doesn't mean marbin uh, ba'at smooth. You're not supposed to be marbin ba'at smooth. Mamatin besimcha. Okay, things that make you joyful. And like, no, we don't do music, we don't eat meat, uh, we don't take haircuts, don't shave, no showers, all of that for, for Tisha B'Av. So why is that? Because we are missing the Beit HaMikdash. So what we're crying for a building? You know, in Brazil, they built a Beit HaMikdash, yeah? Replica. It's, uh, it's just a, a hole, a big hole, but it looks like the Beit HaMikdash, okay. It's not a building. It's not what we're crying about. We're crying because we're missing the closeness and the presence of the Shekhinah in Am Yisrael, the closeness to God. That's what we are, Matin Besimcha. Why? Because how can we be happy if we're missing God? But in Ada, we're Marbe Besimcha because we're Marbe Be'emunah. Even though God's presence is not with us, but God is always with us. That's our belief. Everything's for the good. Every action happens to us. Everything that we with us. God is always judging us favorably for our benefit. We just need to be happy and, good and be thankful for it. And being appreciated of it now makes us happy. So it's on the con side, you know, we don't have the closeness to God in Adar, in, in Av, but the, the physical presence of God. But in Adar, we think about how even God is with us in, in hiddenness, not in revealedness, if that makes sense. Not Begaloi, but Beseter. What's the name of the Megillah we read on Purim? Megillah Esther. Megillah Esther. What does Megillah Esther mean? Megillah is to be megale, to reveal Esther, that which is hidden. We're revealing that which is hidden. That's why the Gemara says in Yerushalmi, Amar B'yachanan, l'atid lavo, kol ha-sfarim al-atidin l'batel, chutz mi-chamisha chumshe Torah. We're only going to have the five books of the Torah. All the other Megillot, it's going to be batel. Says Rish Lakish, chutz mi-megillat Esther. Because Megillat Esther reveals what's hidden. That means now, hidden, we don't understand it. Why am I getting white hairs? Why, am, why is my hairline receding? Okay. Uh, why am I getting fat? Okay. Well, uh, all things happen. And think about why, why is that? Okay. I'm just, I'm just saying the small trivial things. Okay. I don't want to say big things. But as you manage Chokpinu, when everything is going to be revealed for the good, and you realize when they, all the goodness that you have, then that will be amazing. That's why Megillat Esther is going to be revealed. You know, what? oh no, why this Esther has to be taken into the palace? Why is Haman going up? Uh, why is it going to be decree on the Jews? And then you see everything turning around in a miracle and everything happens for the good. Haman's hanged on the tree where his sons are hanging. Uh, Mordechai rises to power and there's happy ending story. That is what's supposed to be like. So we have to be clever along the way and realize um, that God is behind all of this. And that's why we're building up our emunah. So Megillat is an obligation that every person reads it, men and women and children that can be quiet in the Megillah, also read their Megillah. Because the Megillah it tells a story of life where things start off as bad and then turns around that everything was good. Even Big Tan Vatesh, everything plays out a role in there and everything's there for a reason. And everything is calculated and everything's for the good. So that's how you're playing it all out. Okay, so. Are we doing for time? We still got a few minutes. Okay. So that's the Chodesh Adam. Mabim Mesimcha, Mabim Be'emunah. Think about it, and that's what makes us happy. The Emunah, we get in the Chodesh Adam, we can take with us the whole year. And then we just spoke about the Na'afokho. Imagine you're in, a, you're, you're in a shoe store, okay? Uh, your, your child's starting off with shoes. He's trying to put on shoes. So he takes the shoes out of the box, he tries them on, they're too big, they're too small. He tries to put them back in the box. Now he tries to put them back to each other, side to side, they don't fit. He tries to put one on top of the other, the box doesn't close. And he's trying to put them in, put them in, and he can't get the shoes in, back in the box. And he's frustrated, takes them out, puts them in, side by side, back to front. Hey, it doesn't go. And then dad comes along and says, listen, son, you've got to turn one of the shoes upside down. And then it fits in nicely. 
And he's like, ah, the nafohu. So you got to realize when the shoe is upside down, it's not really upside down, that's the right way up. That's how it fits in the box. So that's how you got to look at your life. Sometimes it's staring you in the face, like Yaakov said, you know. It's there right in front of you. The upside down, that's the right way up. That's how everything yeah. fits. All the misfits in life, you think, why is this, you know, why is my child like this? Why is my wife like this? Why is my house like this? Why is my car like But now this, these things, that's the way everything fits. That's how God planned it. That's how it's supposed to be. The word anima, I mean, means I believe. Anima, I mean. Anima, I mean. Aleph, nun, yud. Mem, aleph, mem, yud, nun. Now, it can be read both forwards and backwards. If you take the aleph from the front to the end, you can read anima, I mean, backwards. Anima, I mean, forward, and anima, I mean, backwards. And that's every way you look at it. Every way you look at it, you're alive. Everything is from Hashem. Everything is planned forwards and backwards and upside down. That is the right way. So that's the way with Chazek. Everything's working according to plan, even if it looks upside down, if it looks the right way up, God's got his train. That's from the word of the Zohar. It's in the mind. It's in your mindset. And if we think about that, there's, there's nothing that can spoil our, our Simcha. Yeah. When we finish this year and we go back to what are our problems in life and think about them as well these problems why do i have them and the only answer should be is god gave them to me for my own good and he's got his reason okay so now let's face it well now what do i do about it but in a happy attitude in a calm attitude without worry yeah you can do something about your problems doesn't mean you have to keep the problems and look after them no you can change them but you can at least learn to accept them that brings you happiness. God gave me these problems. and going to help me to cope with them. Of course, it's going to be difficult. It doesn't mean I'm going to get rid of all your problems. But I just have a different attitude, a different way of looking at them. So therefore, it's only a person's mind that can bring him to sadness and his mind that can bring him to happiness. And that's what we believe in, that everything is for the good. I realize the gifts are given to me from Hashem. And then I can accept that. And there's nothing that can, can stop my happiness. As long as I decide what I want to do with my thoughts. I'm going to think happy thoughts. I'm going to think I don't want to be upset about it. These things I can't change. And no one can take away your happiness from you. Your happiness is your free will and your choice. God has decided to give you the goodness, the best goodness that there is for you. The, the best life for you. Uh, everything is going to fit in nicely into the box. You can just enjoy life and be happy about it. Our, our part of the game is to use our mind to think about, I'm going to decide this is, I won't be happy. And there's so many good things in life to enjoy. From the smallest of things, like uh, Mao said, to appreciate it. Appreciate it, my zip works or my, my jumper. Appreciate it, my, there's no hole in my car. I appreciate everything. Every little thing. Say, thank God. Thank God. And, you know, as you walk around your day, think about all the gifts I have to God and be grateful for them and thank God for them. Being thankful is being happy. So that is all the month of being happy and turning around that for. So now let's go to about this gula. Chodesh Adar, all the days of Adar is the day, days of Simcha, which means the days of Emunah. Emunah means being coming closer to God that everything is for our benefit and our goodness. And we can have, I'm going to read the words of the Yeah. The blessed days of the month of Adam. Person can be blessed with abundance in physical and in spiritual goodness. Like God revealed His love for Am Yisrael through the Megillah and through the way that we reveal our love to Hashem. The Megillah says, after the nest of, uh, of Haman, which means they accepted the will of God again. Rashi says, You see how God is so good to you? You just want to be good again. You just want to be a better person. You think, oh, I'm, I'm so blessed. Uh, you know, I have a laptop, I, I have a couch, I can sit down, I can watch a show, I have the time, I have the freedom. I, I love God. 
I love Hashem. Says the Chedush Ha'arim, in this month of Adar, ראוי לכל האיש מישראל לחזור בתשובה שלמה, וחודש אדר מסוגל לתשובה. Are you going to look at me, Robo? I was going to do תשובה, you're going to mixed up with חודש אלול, you're going to mixed up with uh, ראש השנה. אדר, it's not, תשובה is שמחה, it's not, it's, it's תשובה. But it's different type of תשובה. תשובה מיראה, and תשובה מאהבה. So in the month of, of Tishrei and Elul, we're talking about Tshuva Mira. Uh, but in the month of Adar, it's Tshuva Me'ahava, according to Sefer Chasidut. Because if we mean Marbim B'Simcha, which we were translating as Marbim Be'emunah, that brings us up to Tshuva Me'ahava. Because I come close to God with happiness of all the good things that he does for me. And that connects also to what Gilad said beautifully, about Sukkot. Because after Tshuva Mira, in Rosh Hashanah and Kippur comes Chag HaSukkot with Tshuva Me'ahava. And Sukkot is called, according to the Zohar, Tzila De Mehemnuta, which means shadow of Emunah. Then when you're sitting in a Sukkot, that brings you to the Emunah. Everything's from God. That's why you're moving out your house and into a, a shed without a roof, just to realize that everything is from God. And that will bring you to happiness, and that brings you to emunah. That's the simcha of sukkot. Again, so related you, you to the say, simcha of you, you could say the the, the tshuva meira that comes before adar is shavavim, because you go through the parashiot of, of Mitzrayim, and you realize everything comes from God, and that's the meira. And then comes the adar, which is yeah. excellent. I love that. I love that. And in fact, maybe. That is really similar to the Avnei Nezer. Avnei Nezer was one of the big Hasidic leaders, and he said that, in fact, like Meir said, Adar before, similar, Adar Kodem Nisan is like Elul before Tishrei, which means it's the preparing for you the Gula. Elul prepares you for Tishrei. Adar, the, if you're increasing in the Amunah, brings you to Nisan. Nisan is the Chodesh HaGeula. Ben Nisan Nigalu, Ben Nisan Atidin Nigael. Says the Shem Shmuel, what, what is it to Tshuva? We need to get rid of Amalek. Amalek is the klipot, is the source of bad in the world. Okay, we like to call it source of evil. But what does it mean, source of evil? Each one of us inside us has got uh, klipatara. That means on a, we, we've got a heart left, a whole baral yelokim. God created us with a pure heart, which wants to do good, which wants to be good. But the heart is going to become dirty, become influenced in our surroundings, and it's got Amalek inside us. We have to get rid of that. Get rid of the Yitzhah. They have to do Teshuvah Me'ahava. Says the Gemara, if somebody has a din, a judgment, Mishpat, with a, with a Goy, when should he do his um, judgment? In the month of? Which one? Joe? Uh, no, I don't know. I was going to ask something else. Not, not, not in the, I know that not in the three weeks. No, in the month of Adav. In the month of Adav. Why? Because his mazal is good. The mazal in Chodesh Adar is good. So, does that, does that mean to say if you have bad luck in Chodesh Adar, no. then the rest of the year is going to be worse? No, he said the month of Adar is always good for the Jews. Always going to be good. Whenever you have a, a, a court case or judgment, you have it in the month of Adar. So, explains yeah, that the yeah, mission. Mish- bad, bad luck in Adar is really good, it's hidden. Yeah. If something happens in a day, it's good luck. Don't look at it as bad, it's good. It's the best luck. So the gmas is like this. If you have a judgment, a din, with a nukhri, with a, a, a goy, the best thing is to have it in a day. So if we, if we translate that as a judgment, if we've got the Amalek inside us and we want to get rid of him, how do we beat him? In the month of a day. That's the way to get rid of the Amalek inside us, by doing tshuva me'ahava. So we have a gift here from Shamayim in this month. Now it's Rosh Chodesh. Uh, in every Jew's heart, you have the ability to strengthen your heart with love for Hashem, with Emunah by Hashem, and, and increase yourself in closeness to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Uh, we will end off with just this beautiful idea. Satan. Satan is Gematria. Oh, do numbers for me. 309 and 50. 
Hasatan and Fai. Again, Hasatan, Hey, Fai. Sin, 300. Tet is nine. Nun Sofit is 50. How many is that? Where's the maths? The 364, I think. Yes, 364. Says the Gemara Numa, how many days are there in the year? 365. Five. So how many were missing? One. One. All right. So says the Gemara Numa, you know which day is Kippur? Because the Yetzirah comes in all out throughout the whole year, but Kippur, it doesn't have a chance to be made a trig. Okay? Now, Says the Arab David Jungreis, he says, what about the leap year? In the month of uh, Adar Shani, we just add in a whole month. So the whole month of Adar is like also no ability for the Yetzirah to get involved. In this, it's like a whole month of Yom Kippur. So here we've got an extreme uh, extra mazal of Adar Shani, Adar Bet, of coming closest to HaKadosh Baruch Hu like we would have on Yom Kippur the whole time. Says the Bnei Yisachar, the Chodesh of Adar Shani is above the mazal. How many mazalot are there? Constellations. How many constellations? Come on. How many Twelve. mazalot? How Twelve. many? Twelve. 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 How many months are there? Normally 12. If it's Normally 12. Little... So each mazal has one month. Yeah. But in the month of Adar Shani is the 13th month. So there we, we don't have any mazalim there. We're above the mazal. And that is why we have opportunity this whole month, for goodness, that we can all go up and closer in Torah. We can go up above the mazal, unnatural, super way close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and appreciate the Ahavat, Ahavat Hashem, Yarat Shamayim, from Yarat HaRomimut, from the mazal go up and up, and Atzlacha, and Yeshua, and Bezat Hashem, month of Adar, we have Bezat to see, coming closer of the Mashiach, with Rabbi Amen, Amen. 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 So let's just remember everything that we studied tonight in the shield. Uh, remember the, the month of Adas to be happy. Happiness is emuna. And emuna is in your thoughts. The three things of emuna, everything's from God. Everything's for a reason and everything's from our benefit. Uh, let's remember the shoes. Sometimes it needs to be upside down to fit in the box. Everything is made in life to fit. It doesn't have to be the right way up. Sometimes it can be upside down, but that's a good fit. Uh, let's remember the gold threads of the coin Gadol to make it thin. Thin out your worries of gold. Just remember the Rakia from Shamayim. Everything is from God. From God. Remember the month of Adar is Mesugal. Otiot uh, Machshava is Besimcha. And this is a month when we can come closer to Akadish Baruch And through this month, we can be happy the whole year in the Emunah that everything is from God. I hope you enjoyed this show. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. And I wish you all a happy time. Remember, Chodesh it's Rosh Chodesh. Did everyone go out with their wives on Rosh Chodesh? No. No. Did anyone go out with their wives on Rosh Chodesh? So you can still make it up tomorrow morning breakfast. You can go out. Or maybe tonight if there's still time. Or tomorrow morning for breakfast. And the next Rosh Chodesh is only going to be in a month's time. So that's going to be an opportunity. Okay? But it's also a mitzvah to make your wife happy. So if you can make her happy in other ways, think of what you can do to make your wife happy. Yeah, other dishes too. Take it off. Did what the dishes? Yeah. Uh, there was a lot of dishes. That was a lot. <laughs> there was a lot of dishes. Yeah. Okay. Um, everyone's invited for a few minutes of Yilchot Purim.